So this lesson is all about dividing by non-unit fractions. And really, we could just call this lesson dividing by fractions, because at the end of this video, we'll be able to divide by any fraction or mixed number that we come across. But the basis of why division by fractions is the way it is starts in the lesson we just finished on dividing by unit fractions. So let's take a quick review of those uh, concepts. Let's say we have a cake like this, and we want to split it into thirds. And the question that we would have is, how many thirds of a cake could we make out of one cake? One cake being made out of groups of a third of a cake. In the last video, we said that that would be the same as taking that one cake, and since there are three thirds in one, takes three thirds to make one cake, so it makes takes three thirds of a cake to make one cake. All right, easy example. Let's see that though with three cakes. The same idea, how many thirds of a cake can we make out of three complete cakes? That's the same question as asking. Three cakes divided by one third. How many thirds does it take to make three? Well, this goes back to the idea that every unit can be made into a fraction where the numerator and denominator are the same. Three thirds is what it takes to make one cake. So if we have three cakes and each cake is made up of three thirds, then it takes nine thirds of a cake to make three cakes. And again, that comes from the fact that one can be broken down into whatever type of numerator and denominator we want, as long as they're the same. Two halves, three thirds, four fourths, five fifths, 29, 29, 327, 327, etc. We can make one into any type of fraction where the numerator and denominator is the same. And because we can do that, that's how we're going to divide by fractions. So let's take a look at this problem here. Here we don't have a unit fraction. Four pizzas, and we want to split these into groups of four-fifths of a pizza. Perhaps each pizza is in uh, has five slices, and we want to create groups of four slices each. How many possible groups could we create? Again, a number, a value, that's being uh, split into equal pieces. How many four-fifths of a pizza does it take to make four complete pizzas? And now we don't know, perhaps, what exactly to do here, but we do have a few things that we know how to do with fractions and a few processes that uh, we can go through. So the first thing we're going to think is, well, we know that uh, we're going to split this into fifths because that's our denominator. So our first question can be, how many fifths do we have in total? That will at least give us an idea of how many slices we have. And then, one of the essential truths about a fraction like four fifths comes in this question here. How many groups will I have if I split those fifths into equal groups of four? Because that's what the fraction four fifths one of the ways that we can imagine what the fraction four-fifths really means. That is a group of four-fifths of a unit. Three-fourths is a group of three-fourths of a unit. Nineteen-twentieths is a group of nineteen-twentieths of a unit. So we have fifths. They're bunched into groups to make them into four-fifths, and now we can use that to answer the question of the pizza. We can do that visually here as we've looked at uh, the fifths of a pizza that we have, we've taken those four pizzas and we've split them into five, uh, five slices each, we can do that and say, okay, four fifths of a pizza. That's one, two, three, four fifths. There, that's one group. One, two, three, and then we'll use the group here. So one, two, three, four slices of pizza. That's one group of four fifths two groups of four-fifths. Let's use red, another set of four slices here, because we can borrow from other pizzas. We're just creating groups of four slices. That's a third group of four-fifths. A fourth group of four-fifths made here. And then finally, uh, perhaps unsurprisingly, because this is an example problem, we end up with an equal five groups of four-fifths. But let's take a look at the math background behind that a little bit. In terms of the fifths of a pizza, four divided by four fifths, first we want to find out, well, how many fifths? That we know is done by four times five. 
because each one of those pizzas have five fifths, five slices. So four pizzas have four times five total fifths, or 20. Now, this four fifths, this numerator, is us creating groups of five, groups of those slices. If each pizza is made up of five slices, four fifths of a pizza is just a group of four fifths of a pizza, and we make groups by division. So we take those 20 slices that we have to begin with, and we divide them by four, because that groups all those slices into sets of four. And in fraction uh, multiplication or in fraction operations, division is the denominator of the fraction. Numerator divided by denominator. So those 20 pieces divided into groups of four. So four ends up in the denominator. And you'll notice that when we turn from division to multiplication here, our fraction four fifths turns over and becomes five fourths. And this is gonna be true not just for this example, but for other examples as well. Let's look at one more before we get to this process and see that the same thing is true. What if we wanna take four pizzas and split them into groups of uh, three eighths of a pizza? Now a pizza is made up of eight slices and we're splitting them into groups of three. Those two questions that we're gonna ask ourselves are still the same. How many eighths do I have in total? And how many groups will I have if I split those eighths into equal groups of three? Well, looking at it by the same visual example that we did before, here's a group of three, here's a group of three, that's two so far, here's a group of three, borrowing from the next pizza, four so far, or three so far, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and we can't quite make another group. We actually have two thirds of a group left because a group is now made of three. But if we look at it from the mathematical point of view again, that four divided by three eighths. First question, how many eighths do we have? Well, each of those four pizzas contains eight eighths. So the total number of eighths is four times eight. And now when we split them into groups of three, dividing a number into a group of three is the same as dividing it by three. So here, four divided by three eighths becomes four times eight thirds. And that is the process that we use for dividing by fractions. To divide by a number by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal of the divisor. You find the reciprocal, which is the mathematical term for it, by inverting the fraction switching the numerator and denominator. So go ahead, pause the video, write down these two things as important notes. We'll come back to see an example problem of how that works, and then we'll give you some practice problems to work on for the end of the video. All right, so let's take a look at that in practice. Let's say we have 17 twentieths divided by 3 fourths. Well, 17 twentieths, even though it's not a whole number, is still gonna stay the same way that it is. It is the dividend, it's the thing that we're splitting. But now 3 fourths, to divide by 3 fourths, we're gonna multiply by its reciprocal, which is to multiply by the inverted versions of the numerator and denominator, so 4 thirds. Now I'm gonna use some processes we learned before where we're gonna simplify beforehand. 4 and 20 can each be divided by 4 to become 1 and 5, and our quotient is 17 fifteenths. That means it takes a little bit more than one complete set of three-fourths in order to make 17 twentieths. Now we're going to get some fractions as our answers. We're probably going to end up with uh, some larger numbers than our dividend, uh, but that's all okay because we're dividing by values primarily between zero and one. So that's the process. To divide by a fraction is to multiply by its reciprocal. The same rules as multiplication apply. You're going to have to convert mixed numbers to improper fractions in order for this to work. So go ahead, pause the video, work on these four problems here. Remember, division by a fraction is the same as multiplication by its reciprocal. Come back when you are ready to see the answers and to end the video. So here we go. In the upper left-hand corner, we're dividing by 3 twentieths, which means we're multiplying by 20 over 3. Simplify before we multiply, so divide 20 and 8 by 4, and we end up with 35 sixths, just less than 6, 5 and 5 sixths, that is our quotient. In the upper right-hand corner, 1 half divided by 3 twentieths is 1 half times 20 over 3. Divide 2 and 20 both by 2 to simplify first, we end up with a quotient of 10 
thirds. Now, if you just multiplied across and started with 20 over 6, we would have to simplify it to 10 thirds because we always simplify our answers. Down in the bottom left-hand corner, we have 3 and a third divided by 7 ninths. We need to convert that to a mixed number, that is 10 thirds, because we always need to convert improper uh, mixed rather convert it to an improper fraction, uh, because when we multiply, we can't multiply with mixed numbers, at least not the way that we're used to. And, multi and dividing by 7 ninths is the same as multiplying by 9 sevenths. Invert the fraction, find its reciprocal, divide 9 and 3 both by 3, and end up with 30 over 7 for our answer. Uh, and then finally, in 2 and 2 fifths divided by 1 and 1 third, that is 12 fifths, divided by 4 thirds, which means it is multiplied by 3 fourths. Simplify 12 and 4 by dividing by 4, and you end up with 3 times 3 is 9, and 5 times 1 is 5. So that's it for dividing by fractions. Division by fractions is multiplying by a reciprocal because we're creating uh, a total number of pieces that are determined by the denominator and grouping them according to the numerator. So instead of divided by 7 ninths, it is times 9 sevenths.